Okay, so I've got some minutes here to um, dive into Dan GPT um, that I created and talk to you about how it's built. Before we do that, let's establish some context on what Dan GPT even is. So I made this thing. It's um, the product of all of Dan Abramov's uh, posts from X. This is on his new account, not on his old one. I just downloaded all of them. I'm not going to tell you about how I downloaded all of them. Um, let me know if you want. We can do it privately, but I think it's maybe illegal. That's why I'm not going to. Anyway, whatever. Um, I got all of his posts somehow. And um, I used it to build this AI answering engine that answers you like him based on his stuff. So let's look at how that works. If we come here and I'm like, explain why server components is good, right? And I was too lazy to make a spinner. So I just turned the entire button into a spinner. And here, server components are a concept in React, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so on. It's good because composition and um, you can query um, server components are useful uh, because you can call APIs and stuff with private keys and do them securely. And I then share sources based on these are the posts, for example, this one, execute on some machine control, client component, blah, blah. So I show you the sources that lead to this answer. Okay. Um, that's how it works, but let's talk about how it's built. And it's built exactly like how it works, which it, which I just defined. What does that mean? Let's take a look. We have sources, or let's call this retrieved data. We retrieve this from X. I can literally like read on X and I'm taken to X, for example, right? So we have retrieved data and we have generated data. We have retrieved, we have generated, we have R, we have G. We have retrieved, generated. Okay, that's, I wanted to keep that in mind, retrieved and generated. Okay, what do we do with this retrieved and generated data? And how do we plug this all together? Um, let's look at the code. So if we come to the GitHub repo, this is open source, by the way, I'd appreciate you starring it if you um, have the time or interest. But anyway, um, let's look at what we have. This is a Next.js 14 application. And so at the base page, let me bump the font size a little bit. We have um, the answer, which is a server component, and we have, the answer being the result of get chat response. Okay, what is get chat response? It's a function that gets the chat response, that is the generated portion, and it gets it by first getting results from search. Okay, what is search? Well, search is a function that gets a search query. So in this case, the query is explain why server components is good. Um, and then we do some timing just to make sure it's not taking too long. We instantiate Astra DB. We'll talk about what that is in a second. And we get a collection. And here's the interesting part. We vectorize, so we text to vec. We vectorize the query. We'll talk about what vectorization means. Um, then we do a search and we filter the search results for similarity more than 0 0.7, okay? And we return those results. So that's what search does. It vectorizes the text, meaning it vectorizes this, and then does a search, literally like a, a find and a filter on Astra, sorting by the vector, and then returns that, okay. Astra, Vector, what are we talking about? Astra is a database um, that is Apache Cassandra. Apache Cassandra, by the way, is the same database that um, powers the Apple App Store catalog, the entire thing. It's Cassandra data. It's a highly distributed, beautiful um, database that allows high concurrency and um, really amazing scale, okay? So anyway, Astra is that hosted. Astra has a way of storing vectors and then searching on those vectors. Okay, what are vectors? Vectors are long lists of numbers. They're actually not even long lists of numbers, they're just list of numbers. A vector communicates direction and magnitude. It's a number that communicates direction and magnitude. So if we think of a vector in terms of like um, your cursor on, on the web page, so you know, event.mouse move, like when you move your cursor on a web page, assuming an origin of the top right, the top right corner, um, a vector could be um, 53, right? That means you're 53 pixels this way. So 53 meaning forward is the direction and the, um, what is it? It's not the momentum, it's the the magnitude. So you're 53, meaning you're, you're that much forward. And then the direction is the sign. So plus 53 is forward, minus 53 is, is backward from the relative origin, right? That's, that's a vector. It's a number that communicates magnitude. So how far and direction, which direction, plus or minus on the X axis, okay? Um, a popular two-dimensional vector is coordinates, latitude, longitude. It's literally a list of two numbers relative to an origin um, this way or that way. So magnitude and direction. How far north and north being the direction, for example. So that's that's a vector, two-dimensional vector. 
um, two-dimensional meaning, you know, up, down, or left, right. Three-dimensional being up, down, left, right, or deep. So we move about the world, we reason about things in no more than three dimensions. Some would say the fourth dimension is, is like senses, like smell and taste and feeling. And others would say also the fifth dimension is time, whatever. We're, for, the, for the sake of like physical movement through life and the basis of this discussion, we'll say um, three dimensions. So what I'm about to say, there's no real way of communicating this clearly in video format, um, especially two-dimensional video format. I guess it's three-dimensional if I, yeah, okay. But anyway, um, it, for machine learning and AI work, um, it, it happens, this Dan GPT makes use of high-dimensional vectors. That means vectors not just in one dimension, up, down, not just two dimensions, up, down, left, right, not just three dimensions, up, down, left, right, how deep, but up to 1,024, not even up to, like exactly 1,024 dimensions. So if you're thinking about like space, left, right, up, down, or deep, um, there's absolutely no way you can even imagine that. It's just high dimensional. It's a long list of numbers, 1,024 numbers. So what, what does it mean then to vectorize a query? What, do we, what does it mean when we take this here, um, explain why server components is good, and vectorize it, it means we take that text and turn it into a list of 1,024 numbers. Okay, cool. What are those numbers? Where do the numbers come from? And this is where we need a model, a machine learning model called an embeddings model. An embeddings model takes a string of text, like explain why server components is good, and maps each word to a number. And the number is assigned a numerical meaning based on how it was trained. These models usually are trained on large corpuses of text, like huge amounts of text, and they're trained to predict the next logical word in a, in a sentence or in, in a sub, sub corpus, I guess, of text. Um, and the accuracy with which they predict the next word is, is what they're trained to do well. And when it can recognize a pattern that, okay, this word appears next to that word, that word appears next to that word in a context, then when it gets really good at that, it can assign numerical meaning to words that go sort of with each other, close to each other. It's called an embeddings model because it literally like embeds words in high dimensional space. Like literally it points in space. Again, not two dimensional space, not three dimensional space, high dimensional space, okay? So an embeddings model does that. Why does this matter and how does this work with Dan GPT? Well, if we take this pass it to a machine learning embed embeddings, excuse me, model, get a bunch of numbers, that's when we get a vector. We then go compare that vector to all the vectors of all of Dan's tweets. So AstraDB is a vector database, meaning you can store vectors in there. And so that's what I did. I downloaded all of his posts from X, converted them to vectors, stored them in there. Then when you write a query, we literally take, here you can see it in the code, we take that query, turn that query into a vector, and then do a search to check what appears in vector space next to this query? What is the closest thing? And what does that return? It returns this. It returns a number of tweets or posts on X that are somewhat close in vector space to my question. So I asked, why is server comp why, why ser explain why server components is good? And the first result, server components are components that blah, 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 and then so on. Another way to think about it is they serve your regular. So all of these are what the database, which has a built-in vector search algorithm, is what the database considers as close as possible to my query. And we can actually see that here. This is the database, and these are all of Dan's posts. And I can click on search, and it shows me now, based on this one, what other ones are near it. And this is the similarity with which they're near it. So I get a number of results, and then find the closest ones, use them as sources, and I've got these retrieved things that are important context. So I've retrieved, I've retrieved text that is close to an answer of my question because of how embedding space works. So I've, I've retrieved that. I now need to use what I've retrieved to augment the generation of an answer style text. So I've, I need to take this retrieved data and augment a response from like chat GPT. So a generated AI response. I need to retrieve data and I need to use it to augment generated chat completions. Retrieve, augment, generate. This is called RAG, R-A-G, retrieval, augmented generation. So ChatGPT just talks, it generates text. But we retrieve stuff and we use it to augment that generated text to give you generated text that is relevant to the context. What does that look like in code? Well, let's take a look. So if we come here and if we go back 
get chat response. So we call search, we get back a bunch of retrieved vector sim similar data. From there, we literally talk to the chat GPT AI from OpenAI and we give it these messages. Okay, what is get messages? Let's take a look. With get messages, we have a system prompt. We tell the AI who it is. You are Dan Abramov, a former engineer on React.js, uh, the React.js core team at Meta. You are the leading global expert on React, et cetera, et cetera. But we wrap it up with, the question will be asked by the user, here is your context. And what context do we give it? You guessed it, it's the search results that we get from Astra, the, the stuff we receive. So we retrieve data, we give it the system prompt that will augment its generation. And that's the system prompt. And the user um, message is the query. And then ChatGPT basically says, okay, this is your answer based on the retrieved augmenter of the context, and we get this. Um, that is how Dan GPT is built. It's it's an embeddings model that assigns numerical meaning to all of Dan's tweets first, and then I store them in Astra. Then a query is also vectorized with the same embeddings model, gives me numbers, and then I check for similarity between numbers. I get some um, data, and I use the retrieve data to augment ChatGPT's generated output. RAG embeddings, I hope this makes sense. Um, I, it's worth noting that Astra is just one vector database. There's a number of them. There's, for example, Orama. That's Orama, O-R-A-M-A search.com. Um, there's Pinecone. There's a number of them. So, you know, use whatever you want. I'm not here to sell one thing or the other. Um, I hope this was helpful. If it is helpful, I'd encourage you to share this on social media. And I also have a podcast where I go into this in way more depth. I'll put links under the like button. Um, if you subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Do you have any questions? Was this clear? Please leave a comment and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.